Hey guys, it's been a while, hasn't it? Well, today we're gonna tackle a topic that a lot of you voted on Instagram about. So, sit back, relax, grab your pencil and your sketchbook, and let's get ready to draw. Oh, and check out the new intro! Ah! Um, bodies. We're gonna do bodies. How are we to tackle this one topic? Um, well, let's see. I do have a couple videos already. One that deals with how to learn anatomy. And one of how to draw women bodies. Females, I think. This one will be a little bit more in depth on just women. And this one will teach you how to draw the different body types, uh, body parts of the body, like muscle structures, little bones, little dents. But we're gonna focus more so on the general aspect of having an entire body, like the entire system in general, and how to pose it, create it, change the shapes of it, and create different characters with it. We're not going to focus so much on anatomy and we're not going to focus so much on a lot of detail within those features, but I'm going to give you some tips and tricks and you can go look at the other videos if you guys really do want to, you know, get more in depth. But let's get started, shall we? Okay. So, what does a body consist of? A body consists of a torso, Let's see where the rib cage is. Then it goes down. You have a spine cord. Let's change the pen. Then we're gonna have the hips. We're gonna have legs or thighs, calves, and feetsies. Right? Then on top of the rib cage. We have shoulders, upper arm, which consists of the tricep and the bicep. Then we have the elbow joint. Then we have forearm. Yes. Let's do this cleanly. I'm trying to teach you guys, right? Let's do it cleanly. And then we have hands. And the hands have little fingers. So just for a rudimentary way of breaking it down, um, the body in itself has this. And then on top of that, we have obviously our big old noggins, right? So if we were to just take a look at a basic body, that's what we would have. So we got to learn how to do that and come up with something really cool from that. So. You know, right now, it's super basic. And you can break this down even more into straight up stick figures. You could literally start off with just a basic stick figure and then build from that. But we're not going to focus so much on just starting with stick figures. Uh, I have a feeling that a lot of you guys have a problem with taking this and, you know, seeing where everything lies on top of it. And the reason that I say that is because I had a huge, huge issue with learning how to draw like this. Every single time that I would see, like, some animation expert break down like figure like line and you know how to like do the pose and like they'd have like all these super fluid lines and they'd be like doing dancing poses and you know I I just didn't understand what what was going on. Like it was super confusing to me because first of all I did not know anatomy. 
I did not know anything about anatomy, so those circles that they drew made absolutely no sense. I did not know how, you know, like the leg muscles combined with the thigh muscles and why there was a curve going into the calf and, you know, why the spine ended up in the hips like that. I did not know all that. It was really confusing to me. And then whenever I saw people, you know, creating it out of blocks, I just didn't understand it either. You know, like they were, because I didn't understand perspective. Like now, later on in my career, I understand, you know, the reason for having depth in your structures. And that's mostly because you need to be able to set it aside like that in order to be able to determine the underside of things and what angle they're pushing themselves into. But if you're just starting off, this is going to be very, very complicated for you because you're not going to understand why a shoulder is like a tear shape and how it digs into a different muscle structure. So we're going to approach this a little bit different. We're going to we're going to approach it in a more cartoony way. And by say cartoony, it doesn't mean that you can't put realistic detail into it. It just means that it's a very simplified way of going about learning the basics. So let's start with just a basic human body. And we're gonna, you know, break down the details how I normally do it. And hopefully it makes sense to you. And if it doesn't for some reason, you're always free to contact me on Instagram. Send me a message, leave a post comment. And I always try to help out those that actually reach out and actually want to learn. So I welcome that. So come join me on my Instagram. I am more active there, like post daily. And, you know, you guys can actually learn from me there as well. I post many tutorials there all the time. So, okay, basic body. So the way that I approach it, I always start with a circle. Why a circle? Because the circle is the easiest shape to get right. It's kind of hard to mess up a circle. And it also, by determining if you continue around the shape, this is going to be something that you got to remember to do with most of the stuff that you draw. As you draw lines on top of it, avoid drawing straight lines like this. What you want to do, I'll zoom in a little. What you want to do is go around the shape. So whenever you're drawing something that divides, you want to make it like you are going around the whole object, right? So that way it gives you actual depth. So this is how I normally start. And then from this point on, I try to determine where the jaw is. So I'll determine the side of the face. Again, you can do it by following this. And I just do like a little diamond shape. And then I continue and just finish off the top of the face. That is my standard face shape. From this point on, I can either change, this could be where normally where the eyes go, the middle of the sphere, but you can easily change that so it's looking down, right? If you leave it the way that I had it before, he's gonna be looking up. You can change it so he's looking to the side. And so on and so forth. So that's why I like this. I like starting with the circle, determining where the eyes are gonna go looking, and then determine the middle of the face and draw the little diamond shape for the jaw. From this point on, I move on to the body. 
normal bodies are about two, like the torso. Let's move on to the torso. Let's not the body. Torso. So it's going to be from your shoulders down to where your hips are. I'm not considering the like the groin area. That's a little bit different, and you'll see why. Because the hardest part is really determining where the hips go and then how the legs come out of the hips. So I normally tend to break it down like this. First, I make an L shape or like not an L shape. It's more so like two distinct lines that are about the same size. Okay. The reason that I do that is because if you have the body, like an actual anatomically correct body, most of the time from the top of your clavicle at the beginning of your neck down to where your hips are, or like, yeah, down to where your hips are, is the same rough distance than from there to your knees. So that determines where your, how long your thighs are gonna be and how long your torso is gonna be. So I simplify it to the point, it's super simple. I make one little line for the torso and another line roughly the same size for the hips. And then from that point on, you can determine a line about that size as well a little bit shorter sometimes that's more style wise like reasoning but a third little line can determine where your feet are gonna go and you can change those up with any proportions let's say that we have a super big headed character right so we have our circle we have our middle we have you know, our eye line. And this looks more like an anime character. So we can go, you know, like a chibi proportions would be body, thighs, feet. And we're going to, here, I'll leave this here and then I'll, ooh, I'll make another one right here with different proportions so you guys understand more like what it means because right now it probably doesn't make sense okay so we have this we're gonna make one with really big torso just to show you that you can break this rule up it's a guideline it's not a rule so let's try something like this okay so now we have our head and we have our general proportions for the whole body so we're gonna ghost this and let's go into the normal body we're gonna draw super simple cartoony faces so you guys can see quickly without me going into too much detail like what I mean with everything. Okay, so middle of this, yay. This guy's super happy. Okay, so we determined that this is gonna be the midsection, right? This is gonna be roughly where our, tora, our hips are gonna go. I like determining the hips by a little square. Why? Because first it gives you the little like triangle for the you know, groin area and then the little triangles on the sides give you the distance of your hips so you can have really wide hips very narrow hips or non-existent hips you know which is super narrow like this i like determining that 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 area is that's the easiest shape to determine that area so once you have your initial line you can determine when your hips are going to be then I like to draw the bodies, the, the torsos, like a little beanbag that connect to the hip. OK, 
okay? The beanbag shape, there's a reason for that. It's a beanbag shape with a little bit of a flat section at the top, but not too flat. The beanbag allows you, just like the circle on the top, it allows you to be able to trace around the shape really easy. If you do the beanbag in the half, it provides you with the information where the rib cage is perfectly, with giving you the right dents in the drawing that provide the same indentations that your actual rib cage would have. So that's why I really like it. So we have our beanbag shape. And then we go to the legs. Legs, they start from the hip, right? The edge of the hip. We already determined that right here is gonna be where our kneecaps are gonna go. So we can even, you can just add circles for the kneecaps at that area, like generally in this area. Let's say you wanna have cross legs, right? You can just determine that like that. And you already know your feet are going to be down here. Boom. Ta-da! Cross legs. If you want to have like an action pose, remember, if this is the max and you want to extend them, they would come up a little bit because they're following a rotation. Imagine it's a pendulum. You know, a pendulum from the middle. And that area right here is the center. So if you want to open up your legs, it would open them up within this range. Well, you're going to go super drastic and we'll just make them have a split. So it would be something like this. Kneecaps would be right here. The bottom part was right here, right? So we just follow this right here. And we have determined that our character is doing a split. Uh, but let's go for a normal pose. Not like before we go into all that stuff. We determine where the knees are gonna go. Our legs start from the bail of the crotch, top of the hip and just a little tiny diamond shape. Then from there, we already know where the feet are gonna go. So you can do the same thing. You can set a little ball for the ankles and make a little shape that goes down. And then from the feet, the feet are interesting uh, because a lot of people don't draw them right. Feet. If you have a little ball and you have your your shape going into it, I like drawing feet simple triangles and then giving them depth and then you have feet. I mean that's the easiest way to go about it and whenever you draw them looking towards the front, you just have to make sure that you remember drawing into perspective. So now we have legs. Easiest way to draw the legs, it could be two little cones. Remember, everything has depth. So it could be one little cone for this part. This little cone it's a little, it has a little bit of a weird top because it connects to the hips, so it's angled. Okay, a little sphere for the knee joint. And the same thing happens with the shoulders and the arms. So, determine where the top of the, the beanbag is. I like doing just a little tiny top, like that. Imagine it was like, you know, like a cup, and then you're gonna be able to pour stuff in there. But this little line determines 
the clavicle area of your character. That little bone that you have right here, that's what this gives you. It determines the front side of the actual body. From there, determine where your shoulders are gonna go by identifying it with two little circles. And you're gonna do the same thing as you did here. With arms, normally, if I have any issues like knowing where the top of the arm is gonna end up, I just measure it against my body. And it tends to be at the bottom of the rib cage. That's where the first joint of the arm falls, right? And then if I put my arm next to my body, I can determine that the hand ends up a little bit past the, the middle of the hip, which is a little bit, you know, below the crotch. So let's get rid of this part. So we have two little lines that determine the distance of our arm. And then you can do the same thing that I did with the, with the legs. If you want to bring it up, you can just make the little arch that goes up. And you determine that's roughly about the same size right here. Boom. So you can position it in any way you want as long as you learn, you know, how it swings around your body. So we have that and we do the same thing. It's going to be a cylinder, a sphere for the elbow joint, and then from that elbow joint, another little cylinder tape that tapers down into actually I don't like drawing a little circle for the hand I like drawing a little a little box with a rounded shape at the front and the reason that I like to do that is because this part doesn't really rotate too much and to every side it's kind of, it more so just moves up and down and very little to the sides so I like doing my hands more so like this. It's like a flat side and the curved side. And because hands, fingers don't just come out straight from a hand, there's actual curvature. So having that little round part helps out a lot. From that point on, depending on what style you're gonna go with, you can make fingers. And then you have a hand. All you gotta do is trace the shape around it. And then you would have a perfect hand or an arm. See what I mean? You would have a really nice arm. So let's apply those principles into, let's say, the TV mode. Okay, let's make a new layer. So we have we have our big character, we have our head. I'm gonna give it some ears. <laughs> we'll make it into like an anime character. An anime rod. Yay! <laughs> okay, so we have Chibi Rod. And we're gonna apply the same principles as we did here. So we're gonna make this one super excited. So maybe the beanbag shape, instead of going like this, because he's like, you know, leaning towards this side. We're gonna make them super excited and we're gonna make it bending back. So, right? With chibis, 
we don't really put a neck on them. Mostly because we want to make sure that the bodies are nice and compact. Where's the camera? Yeah, we want to make it nice and compact. So we want to keep it nice and short and stubby. Like, we can even make it even a little chubbier. Right? From that point on, we have our little triangle for the hips. Remember, that determines... These determine the width of your hips. So that's where your you know, legs are going to come out, and that determines your groin. That's going to be the southernmost part of your actual torso. And now we're going to draw legs. That little circle is where. That's where the kneecaps are going to go. And then this where our feet are going to go. Yay! GB bodies are very similar. You know, like... Uh, to normal bodies, only everything is contracted and chubbier. So when we do the arms, you're going to keep the same proportions. Roughly at the bottom of where the rib cage would go, and then the hands. But we're going to make them chubbier. Yay! If you don't want them to have so much of a booty, just don't enhance it so much. And then we have a little tiny character. If you wanted to go even more stylized though, uh, I would do it more so like this. You can even go super simple, like ridiculously simple with chibis. There's a face. Uh, same beanbag, but just make it chubbier, and then literally just make little nubs. You don't even need to distinguish. Like arms or anything, <laughs> and you can just make chibis like that. They could be little tiny nubs, like. And that could be your your hands and your feet can just be little tiny nubs as well, with like a shoe in the kitchen. So that would be like the super simplest way to make a chibi. But it always starts with the little beanbag shape. The beanbag shape allows you to actually be able to determine like more dynamic positioning for your actual body. So that's why I really like that. Now let's go on to the other one. The one that has like some weird proportions, right? Maybe this is gonna be like a really big muscle builder. So we're gonna change things a little bit. Let's get rid of those for a second. And where's this? Okay, I'll get rid of that for a second too. So bodybuilders have a really big upper body and then their bodies taper down. So they look more like diamonds. When it comes down to actually drawing the beanbag like that, you can still do it. It's still a modified beanbag shape. You just taper the bottom part a little bit more. Their hips are normally very narrow. And the rib cages are really long, so make sure that the top of the beanbag shape is a little bit bigger than the bottom part. And you can go super exaggerated if you want, but let's just keep it like this for now. Then we have our legs. The legs are incredibly thick, right, for a bodybuilder. So, like before, let's determine where the kneecaps are going to go. And follow my own rule. Kneecaps go up if they're more apart from the body. And then we're just going to make a really, really 
thick shape. It's still a cone, but it's more curved. It's more like a tube. Okay. We can even go bigger. Like at that point, like you can just enhance the shape once you have the basic shape down. Again, we have where our feet are gonna go. We're gonna determine that. And then we're gonna do the same thing. Just gonna enhance that little tube section. Boom. And we'll go a little bit more into like how to determine the muscle structures and like all that in another video uh, where I go more into detail of how I draw certain parts of the anatomy. But you get the general gist of drawing the actual bodies a certain way with this video. Uh, I'll do the other one soon though. And then into feet, by drawing small feet, you make everything else look bigger. Okay, so we're gonna go into shoulders. Shoulders are gonna be massive as well because, you know, they're bodybuilders. Arms fall into the same proportions as everybody else. So we're gonna determine where the bottom of the rib cage is. That's gonna be where our first joint is gonna end up. And then from that point on, you can just do a line that's roughly the same size as that to continue on. We're gonna make them flexing. So we're gonna make them flexing like this. For this side, and we'll just do like an arm laying down from this side. So same thing as the legs. Determine where the elbow joint's gonna be, and then just make an exaggerated shape, like tube thing. Normally the underside of the arm is a little bit less curvy. If you ever need reference, you can always look at your own like self in the mirror. Um, and then the same thing with this one. A two, like just big two. Into that little box thing, curb, and that's where your fingers come. So now you have a big muscle. The necks are really thick. <laughs> Might be a little too thick. And there you go. They always have a massive mustache. Yeah. So you get the idea of how to actually set up basic proportions like that. And it's easy to actually get into doing three quarter like poses and stuff like that as well with these because all you gotta do is just take that shape and then put it behind. If you put it behind his the bean bag, then you get a back pose. If you put it in front of the bean bag, and you get a front pose. You know? It's all about like moving the shapes back and forth. Uh, let's try to make a more complicated shape. Uh, let's try to do like a like a sort of like pinup y like woman. Uh, women, it's gonna be the same thing, only the hips are gonna be a little bit wider. Uh, let's just make a quick example. Because I didn't do anything about one. Oh, bean bag shape. Their hips are gonna be a little wider, so you might wanna expand that shape a little bit more into a triangle. You know the opposite? Like we are gonna do a bigger bottom and a smaller top in the bean bag. Unlike the bodybuilder that we did, that was a upper body that was wider and then the smaller, we're gonna do the opposite with the one. Same thing with this. If we start it off from the beginning, let me follow my rule. Let's make this a little 
tower. So we're going to have the head, the line determining where the body is going to go to the torso, same size line to where the knees are going to go, and a little shorter line to where the feet go. For women, I like making sure that they have hips. So where the bottom of the rib cage falls, that's where it tapers in a lot for women. And then you, that's how you get that little hourglass shape. Mm -hmm. cool. But it always starts with a bean bag for me. It just makes it super simple for me um, to determine exactly where everything's gonna go. Same thing, you have where the edges of your hips are and your groin. Uh, if you want to determine where the knees are going to go, women have thighs, you know, most, for the most part, they tend to have like wider thighs than men. So the leg has to have a wider section in this part. You can make it normal too. Like it's like, you don't have to give them hips or like thighs, but I like my women with thighs. I like drawing them with thighs. I like drawing them with curves. So it just makes it more an interesting design for me. So I like doing it like that. And then when it comes down to the feet, I like to taper the bottom section, the calf section, make it so it's a wider. It tapers from skinny to wide to skinny like that with a wider section more towards the top than towards the bottom that way you determine like the curvature of the calves and i do that with men too but depends on the man like it doesn't like men don't need this as much as well as they don't need determination of the like thighs as much now uh, it's more of a female trait and i'll go more into that as well in the Drawing Females Part 2 video that I'm going to be releasing. And also, this is going to be part of the anatomy, a stylized anatomy my video that I want to release. So keep an eye out for those. But for now, we're just going to realize that it's the same thing. It's a tube for the calves, a tube for the thighs, and to the feet, which are, I guess, from the front view. It's more so like a little tapered box, but from the side view, it would be like a triangle, okay? Same applies to the arms. Arms tend to be a little bit skinnier on, on women. The emphasis on women's arms is going to be the same thing though. Elbow ends up roughly where the top of the beanbag sip starts. Upper arm and lower arm, roughly the same size, into the hand. And you can play with these going behind the body, going in front of the body, and also breasts. Women have breasts, right? Let's make it lighter. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous to just like simplify them down to little spheres because they're not little spheres. They're more like you know, like water droplets that have like heaviness towards the bottom. But when I'm actually drawing really, really quickly and I need to get something down, since I already have the knowledge, it makes it easy just to draw circles. But if you don't, the easiest way to approach it is to imagine, like after you draw the neck, imagine that there's two little water balloons hanging around the neck. Right? And that tends to give you a very, very close relationship to how breasts fall on a woman. All right, so now knowing that we can actually apply this just by slightly differentiating, like 
men and women. Women, more of an hourglass shape, right? Men are more of like squares. Boom, 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 boom. Everything else can be very, very similar. It doesn't really change much. The way that I approach it is super simple. And you can do a lot with just simply knowing those little tidbits. So we're going to go into drawing like a slightly more not so frontal pose. It's already a 40 minute video. So uh, let's try to do this. I'm going to do this in time lapse mode. So you guys don't have to, you know, sit around. And I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. Okay. Now that we actually have the drawing, a, a nice cool gesture, let's draw a little bit over it so you guys understand like that this whole thing has the same elements, okay? And then I'll continue on and then finish up the drawing. But let's stop right here that we have like a nice gesture-y sketch and then let's see if it actually falls and follows what I explained. So, first, we have our head. Boom, 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 boom. And we determined the center point of the head. And the eyes. Right? Then I did a little thing for the jaw. A little, you know, triangle part at the bottom. From this point on, I made two equal lines that provide me the shape for the body or torso just call it torso and thighs providing me a middle point where my hips are going my little triangle determines where the hips on one side are going to go, where the hips on the other side are going to go. And then I made a bean bag to give depth and provide me with the information of my torso. In this case, I wanted him to be hunching over, forward, and having a very big action pose. So giving a little bit of squish provides that. From this point on, we already determined where our kneecap are gonna go because of this line. And then a line just a little bit shorter than that determines where my foot's gonna go. This one's going into perspective. So we're gonna go the same distance but then it's going to be a shorter distance because we want to determine like depth. We want to make it look going into the other side. Same thing with the arms. You determine the top of the actual beanbag. That's going to give you a lot of information halfway through. That's where your shoulder is going to go. Like this point right here. If you split that in half, in the two extremes. You know how we determine the two extremes with uh, the hips? By splitting that in half, it provides you shoulders. That's where your shoulders are gonna go. 
from the shoulders to about the middle of where the beanbag thing is is where your first your elbow joint's gonna go and we make two tapered well a tapered you know cylinder going their way the wider the cylinder the more muscle it's gonna have and then we have another tapered cylinder to determine the form and then we have the hand which is a little box that has a circular part at the top and then the other one is going into perspective and I still want it to be pushing back so I uh, it goes about the same distance into the shoulder blade into a tapered box that goes far into the distance and I determine the distance by just making a half circle from the other side into the same type of shape just a lot smaller so it gives you like a very dynamic like force perspective look tapered from the crotch tapered from the other side of the hip provides me my thighs and tapered remember tapered high if you taper it high it gives you the calf muscle too you don't have to do it like that that's just how i like to do it and it tends to work really nicely into the feet that are more like this into the other foot that's going into perspective like that okay so as you can see it's a very easy way to go about it, like learning how to do it without learning a lot of the muscle structures the only things you guys have to keep in mind is where the rib cage is going to end up and you already determined that easily by making a beanbag shape where the hips are going to go and that's really easy with just a triangle and understand that the joints they're 3d objects that mesh into each other right and as long as you keep that in mind it's really easy to understand how they mesh into each other and actually create the little bumps that you guys see when it comes down to your arm. So, I'm gonna finish this up real fast and I'll catch up with you guys in a second. All right, well, there you have it. A simple way to actually break down a character and their bodies in order to be able to actually understand it without having to know every single part of anatomy. So, as you can see in the illustration that I finished, it's very simple to go ahead and create very dynamic shapes, very dynamic poses, and all you gotta do is really keep in mind that the body is a 3D object. It's not a stick figure. It's not blocks. It's not, you know, like just blobs. It's a 3D shape. And as long as you actually start learning that, it's gonna be incredibly easier for you to actually be able to create more dynamic and better poses. Also remember that as you grow with skill, you'll also be able to see things with more complex shapes. We broke everything down in cylinders and cubes and little beanbag shapes. But as you get better and you realize these things are just the foundations, you're start, gonna start seeing little tiny little things that change and then you get add to your basic drawings in order to get better and better, quicker and more accurate. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it went a little long, but I think that we covered a lot of the basic information that I wanted to convey. 
Hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Look forward to the rest of the videos that are coming up in the coming weeks. Make sure to subscribe if you guys want to get notified with my latest uploads. And make sure to check out some of the other videos that I have. I think there's over 94 of them so far. So in all of them, talk a little bit about how to live as an artist, how not to start, and how to get better. So this was Rod. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.